today we're going to introduce ourselves to MIDI controllers. If you're just starting out to make music using electronics, then this video is meant for you. A lot of my students often fall into this category, so I wanted to create a little bit of a recap summary video for y'all. So let's get started. A MIDI controller is a piece of gear that is a great tool for making music with software and computers. It isn't a sound source on its own, so by just playing it or pressing it, you wouldn't have any sound produced by it. So it's different from what's called a synthesizer, which is an electronic music instrument that will synthesize and create music as you play it. A controller is hardware that you're going to connect to your computer with some kind of cable. By interacting with the controller in various ways, you're going to be sending information to your computer, and that's what's going to help you make music. MIDI controllers come in all shapes and sizes, and if you've seen some of my videos, you'll know that I have quite an assortment of them. In this video, I'm going to be using my Alesis V mini controller as my demo controller. This is also one controller that I highly recommend for beginners for a number of reasons, including its price point and its portability and its features. The V mini, even though it's kind of mini and a little bit little, <laughs> has a lot of things. It has keys, black and white, like a keyboard. It also has a set of pads on top here that you can press. And it also has smooth knobs that you can turn. So I could interact with all of these and each of these would send different kinds of information to my computer to help me create my music. When you buy your MIDI controller, it typically comes with a USB cable that is going to allow you to connect your controller to your computer. At this point in time, most of the USB cables that come out of the box are still USB 2 or 3. So if you have a computer with USB-C ports like me, you might need an adapter in order to get it on one end of your controller and connect it to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and connect the V-mini. Now we've got some lights on my controller just around the knobs. More often than not, there will be some kind of visual information or lights or LEDs to let you know that your computer is connected to your MIDI keyboard. Another way I like to check is to just press the pads sometimes and you'll notice that in this case they are responding and they are lighting up. So that's a good sign. When I make music with my computer, which is a MacBook Pro, another really useful tool that I like to check for MIDI connections is called the Audio MIDI Setup app. I believe this runs across all Macs, so let's see if we can check it out. Cool, so right now I've got the Audio MIDI Setup app open. I'm going to head over to the top menu where it says Window, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click an option that's called Show MIDI Studio. Once I do that, my MIDI Studio window pops up and my V Mini is over here lit up to show that it is connected and it is recognized by my computer as a MIDI controller. At this point, you would probably open your program of choice and start setting MIDI things up specifically in that program. There are differences between different softwares and I think at this point I've probably helped my students set their MIDI things up in maybe close to 20 different programs. Most of the time it tends to be live, Bitwig, Pro Tools, Logic, GarageBand, FL, Reason. If there is a specific digital audio workstation that maybe you'd like me to elaborate on in terms of MIDI setup and getting yourself running, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll try to do a video on that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a good MIDI start for you and I'll see you next time.